Hey, hey, good morning. How are you? Got my timer. Here we are for another move sesh. It's Tuesday. Welcome, welcome. About to get started here. Got my heater going, which I'm probably going to be warm any minute now as we get going. Um, I am live on TikTok as well today. TikTok and Facebook. So that's fun. Looking for more people who want to move with me. <laughs> All right. Are we ready? Let's get going. So say hi as you're jumping on and joining me and uh, let me know where you are coming from. We're going to be doing about 45 minutes today and it is leg day. So you're going to work on legs. Hey Betty, how are you? Thanks for joining me. All right, <clears throat> let's get going. So we're going to start with just some gentle, easy twists, loosening up the spine, loosening up the hips, always taking our um, warm up really seriously. You want to start really gently, really um, just increasing the blood flow, increasing the range of motion, increasing movement. Some of you maybe are just getting up, just curling in here, and you're still a little bit stiff and creaky, and some of you maybe you've been up for hours. I've been up since 5.20. Uh, I've already run today, so my body has been loosened up. I did a little bit of mobility before I ran, but um, I'm live on TikTok today as well, so this is my thing for December. I am going to <laughs> go live on TikTok Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I'm live on Facebook in my private workout Facebook group, um, which I've been doing this for how many years now, Betty? It's been a while, but I've been doing three times a week live sessions. Um, <coughs> started sometime in COVID. And um, we continue today. I post the recording, um, so the replay of all of these videos get posted to my YouTube channel. So if you're sort of catching this and it's not a good time for you to join me, then you can always do the replay um, on the YouTube channel. There's hundreds of workout sessions on there um, for you to do. And Fun fact, when I started doing these, I was probably about 20 pounds heavier. And so I was scrolling through the YouTube channel yesterday looking at some of the older workouts. Um, because the funny thing is when people do those workouts, they pop up to the top of the YouTube channel. <coughs> I know Jen Sharp does them regularly. And she goes through the old ones. And it's so funny to see me, <laughs> what I used to look like, because it's only been like this this year, uh, 2023, where I dropped that 20 pounds, and probably more of it, but between 15 and 20 is where I sort of fluctuate, but um, it's still kind of, I see those old, old videos, which were really not that old, they're only like a year, a year ago, and I think, like, who is that person, um, because that was the lovely effects of a number of things, you know, midlife years, and uh, we'll, we'll probably talk a little bit about that today. We talk about that every day that we work out as we talk about the changes that happen to our bodies and <coughs> how we respond to that, how we deal with that. Um, and I, I, I honestly, initially, I, I tried my best to figure out what was going on. Like, why are all these things happening? I'm doing the same things. All the things that have always worked for me are not working anymore. What is going on? And uh, eventually I sort of, uh, I'm embarrassed to say, I kind of just gave up. I kind of just decided this is probably who I am now. Like I'm getting older. This is what aging looks like. <coughs> um, I need to just accept and embrace myself with this extra weight on. I need to accept and embrace that my body's not gonna move the way it used to. It's gonna ache all the time. I'm not gonna sleep ever again. Um, and I'm just gonna roll with it. So I'm gonna increase a little bit the intensity. Um, I'm already feeling a little bit warm here. And if you're trying to join my video right now on TikTok, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't. I'm, I'm over here working out, so <laughs> can't invite you on at this point. but. Um, I throw up my hands and, and when we give up we, we lose hope we lose belief and we just sort of 
can sometimes spiral into the into the very things that are causing us to be in the place that we're at, that we're trying to get out of, right? So for example, um, some of the habits that I had acquired over the years that were probably contributing to how I was feeling in the perimenopausal process, you know, drinking wine, um, eating chips, um, primarily those two things, really. Um, during, sort of after, towards the end of the state, later stages in COVID, I sort of just lost my discipline in how I ate. And all of those things, you know, compounded and it made me feel worse. So I wasn't really helping myself in the process is what where, where I'm getting at. And I think we do that, right? When we lose hope, um, we give up and we just lean into the things that are actually probably the things that are putting us in that position in the first place. Um, before I go on about that, I want to just preface that I want you to feel free to um, modify anything I'm doing or change anything I'm doing today if you're a beginner. So um, I increase the intensity for the second round of warm-up, and I'm going to increase the intensity again for the third round, but you don't have to. You can keep it to low, no impact, and I will do my best to offer modifications throughout the session um, for whatever level you're at. Um, because my my goal is always to cater to you as a beginner and to help you have belief and hope again. That's, that is my goal with these sessions because when I started these sessions during COVID, um, Betty, you know, because you've been with me the whole time, the timing of that, um, are we coming up, is 2024 going to be our fourth year of doing these? I was at my version of rock bottom, and um, I felt like what it felt like to be off the rails and a beginner. And um, it's funny because I was doing my core yesterday thinking, it was not that long ago that I could not do some of these things. And so my goal is always to offer you an outlet where hopefully through my coaching in each video that we, we go through, I can breathe some belief into you and I can breathe some hope into you and you can hang with me and do what you can. Um, for you who is, is just beginning to warm up, is about 10 minutes, that might be enough. Maybe you stop after the end of the warm up and maybe that's all you do for the first um, little while, as long as you need to before you wanna carry on into the actual workout. So right now we're just doing the final round of the of the warm up, which is high intensity. Which again, you can modify it to look something like this. Um, a great modification. Anytime we're doing something that's outside of your scope at the moment, um, march on the spot, um, or you could do air squats, or you could do bicep curls. Those are kind of my three go tos because I feel like. We can always sort of lean into those things. Um, at the very least, you can march on the spot, right? And keep your body moving, but adapt in. You're not supposed to be at the finish line when you start, right? <laughs> You're not supposed to be um, fit when you start your fitness journey, right? Like, you're not supposed to be um, a doctor when you start med school, right? You're, you're supposed to go through the process, and that's, that's what this is right now. Um, this is, sorry, I need to say more all the time, I've lost my, this is the process. And I will tell you a little secret, it's not really a secret, but it's something I talk about a lot. The process never ends. The process is infinite. You're not supposed to ever be <laughs> at the end of the process. Self-improvement, um, and especially when it comes to our health and wellness, and fitness and nutrition, is an ongoing it's an ongoing process. So the minute that you can accept and embrace that you're on a path that never ends, right? Like a lifelong journey of how can I be better? You stop being in such a rush to get to the finish line because there isn't one, right? So you're rushing to a place that doesn't exist, which is why you feel so frustrated 
then you never get there because you're not supposed to ever get there. So all you're supposed to do is get a little further along that road than you were yesterday. That's all you're supposed to do. Each day, by show so some days you might show up for five minutes, as long as that gets you a little further down that road, that's good. And other days you might do a double. You might do two workouts, right? So whatever each day looks like for you, just make, make that deposit. Think compound interest, right? Every action you take has compound interest. And that means whether you're taking actions towards your goal or, or away from your goal. If you are doing a little thing every day that's working against your goal, that compounds over time. If you're doing the things that work towards your goal, that compounds over time. So little habits count whether they're bad or good habits. It's just are you accumulating more of one or the other. So um, who's the, who do I got with me today? I know you got Betty and Darcy, my two regs. So nice to have you guys on. Those of you who are on TikTok, give me a follow so you can catch the next session. We do these three times a week. Um, and those of you who are catching me on Facebook, again, TikTok, wherever you're catching me, know that all of these sessions get uploaded to YouTube. So we're gonna do likes today. So if you are new, um, to working out, and this is your first time, you're going to do most of what I do with outer weights, right? And, oops, I'm gonna stop that guy. All right, so we're gonna start with squats, and I'm gonna do a lighter set first to, to warm up, and then I'm gonna increase the weight. So grab a weight, now I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways you can hold these weights. I'm actually gonna get this other weight before I step on it. So you might wonder why I'm working out in socks. <laughs> Nobody's ever asked me that, and I always wonder, do they think I'm here? So you can hold it goblet style, like this. If you want to increase, you can hold it um, suitcase style, like this. Or I like to hold it like this, because I just feel like I can just, um, they're just not as pesky. Okay, so we're going to do 10, 9, 8, Seven. So the reason why I work out in socks is because this past year, um, the past few years, I guess, four, three, two, last one, um, I feel like I was struggling in the department of my feet. Uh, my feet were stiff and sore and not bendy. I was losing flexibility in my feet, and I used to always spend a lot of time in soft feet or bare feet, like walking around the house or working out, um, I would always be, and I noticed that all the time I had shoes or slippers on, and so I wondered, is that why? Because my feet aren't um, used to being on in, in the old natural position. So we're going to do um, back lunges next. So again, same thing, I'm going to hold a goblet style. I feel like this is the most comfortable way. And we're gonna step back, and I hate, I always find back on this so awkward feeling. Um, so once my inflammation left my body, I think that's three, three, we're doing 10 per side. Once the inflammation left, where I was able to actually bend my feet again, I wanted to start working on re-strengthening them. And so I tried not to spend all my time in slippers, and I started working out in my socks. <laughs> that is why I have no shoes on. So I think that's six, seven, woo, get your balance. Eight, if you're new, do this with no weight. I'm gonna go up on, our, on my second round, but I wanted to start my first round a bit lighter in order to warm my body up a bit more. Drink as we go through. So I'm like later because I'm trying to do my gallon a day. We're going to do um, RDLs, which is um, Romanian deadlifts? Romanian deadlifts, I think. Anyways, it's the kind of deadlift that we're not going all the way down. So we're going to have, I want your chest out, shoulders back and down, 
you're gonna, here's the best cue I've ever heard for deadlifts. You wanna close the door. So close the door behind you with your butt. So two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice I'm not going all the way down. And I want your chest out. Nine and ten. It's not easy to count and talk at the same time, you guys. It's not easy. Okay, and then we're gonna finish with lateral lunges. So we're gonna do eight each side. If you're new, you're gonna go no weight. You're gonna do um, we're gonna do eight on one side and eight on the other. So this is what they look like. If this is gonna be the modified version. You're just gonna step into a squat, okay? Some of you are not gonna have the hip flexibility or mobility to, to get all the way out to the side. Um, so again, do these without a weight if you're new. If you've been doing these a while, because we do these a lot in here, you can grab a weight. You wanna get that butt down. Two, you're basically squatting on the one leg. Three, four, five, Six. Pull in that core, seven, and chest stays somewhat out. Okay, it can fall forward, but you don't. You want to make sure you're actually squatting, not just bending over. A lot of times, I see people cheat on this one. They just bend over. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Okay, so that is step one. So squats, back lunges, RDLs, and side side squats. Let's call it. Having a drink in between and uh, taking a quick a quick break, quick breather. Um, so again, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try going up a little bit in weight for this next round. Sometimes it's just like you want to keep your body introduced to the movement first before you add weight. Um, you want to make sure the movement feels good to your body before you add weight. If you're new, you want to make sure that your mind-body connection is there with the movement. Uh, my son and I are coaching. Um, my older son and I are coaching my younger son's baseball team right now. We're doing the strength and conditioning for them. And as you can imagine, very nine boys have an ego. They want to lift. They want to lift heavy. They're comparing with each other. And I'm like, no, 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 because as soon as you pick up a weight, all your movement patterns go out, out the window if you haven't established the mind-body connection of them. So if you haven't, you know, if your body, if your mind hasn't really sort of, it's like programming a computer. If your mind hasn't accepted the programming as of yet, then then as soon as you add weights, your, your program fails, right? <laughs> But, but a good analogy. All right, so back to squats. So again, I'm gonna hold them like this. You can hold them suitcase style at your sides. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're not new, I wanna challenge you because your body does have the programming already done, right? It already knows the movement patterns. I want to try to challenge you to go heavy. I want to challenge you to lift a weight that makes it hard to do those last couple reps, right? As middle-aged women, the best thing we can do for our bodies is build muscle. And it's, it's not easy to do that when you're in your middle age years because we all go through something called sarcopenia which is basically a fancy word for the breakdown of your muscle or the deterioration of your muscle. And so while you're losing muscle, <laughs> you're trying to build muscle. <clears throat> so if nothing else, we at least want to slow down the deterioration of the muscle, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. The first reason you want muscle on your body is because it takes up less space than fat. So the more um, muscle you have on your body, the smaller your body will be 
in relation to space, right? Um, not saying you're going to weigh less, but you're going to be smaller. Your size will be smaller. I lost track. Let's do eight, eight, nine, nine, ten. We're doing ten of each, ten each side. Ten. So that's the first reason, because we all want to be smaller. I know we all want to weigh less, right? But ultimately, by weighing less, what we really want to do is we want to, we want to take up less space in the world, right? That's really what the goal is. We want to be more toned. We want to be less fluffy and squishy. In most areas, maybe not in all areas. <laughs> and so building muscle, and the only way you're going to build muscle is to challenge yourself <coughs> with lifting heavier weights. But you're not going to lift heavier weights until you've got those movement patterns down pat, right? Because we don't want to lift heavy weights. Um, you know, it's bad enough when you're a grade nine boy doing that, but if you're a middle-aged woman, you're going to put your back out, uh, you're going to wreck your shoulder, you do all kinds of things that are not easily fixed anymore, right? We don't bounce back quite the same way as we did when you're younger. Okay, so RDLs, so you're going to bend over, grab the weight, chest is out. So bend over, grab the weight, chest out, butt comes down a bit, lifting, and then hinging forward and lifting up. Okay, hitching forward, lifting up. So chest is out, butt goes back. So the best analogy I've heard is you're shutting the door behind you with your butt, right? Shut the door, <laughs> right? So butt comes back to shut the door, chest stays up. I don't know what count we're at. I should use a timer when I'm talking. Five, four, head is up, three, two, Legs are straight, but knees are soft, okay? Because we're not squatting. Um, all right, so then we're gonna do side lunges, eight per, eight per side. If the side lunges are too hard, you're just gonna do side squats. <coughs> um, so reason number two, that you wanna build muscle as a middle-aged woman is because you're gonna burn more calories at rest. Right? So you can eat the exact same thing, but you're going you're to burn more calories. Your body's going to use the calories more efficiently. Um, muscle requires more um, energy, I guess, is the way to say it. And so for your weight loss goals, you're going to find it's a lot easier to maintain the weight loss if you build some muscle. <coughs> Excuse me. That like a frog in me to go this morning. Three... Two, we're supposed to be doing eight per side. I can't promise you that my counting is on. <laughs> um, it might not be. It's eight on the other side. Eight. If you're joining me on TikTok, um, you're probably not working out with me because you're probably, <laughs> we're planning on working out right now. I encourage you to follow me on Instagram or follow me on Facebook and, or you can go to the link in my bio um, and you can join my MOVE community um, where we do these three times a week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9 15. Um, we do these in my Facebook group. So follow me on Facebook or Instagram or both. Um, go to my link in my bio and join my Facebook group called the Daily MOVE Community. Or follow my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel, I always take these live sessions and I upload them to my YouTube channel for most of the people who do them, who do them at a later date, right? So but I would like to invite you to join me. I have a couple diehards that join me every single time. They never miss a time. Thank goodness for them. They are my accountability as much as I am theirs. <clears throat> In fact, <clears throat> I'll tell you a story. Um, all right. So that is 50, now we're going to stick with the 50. Because I don't have anything heavier than that, I don't think. 35, 45, 55, we'll stick with that. Um, the reason these classes started in the beginning was because I couldn't get my butt to work out. And it's kind of embarrassing to admit that I'm a personal trainer, that you know, basically got really out of shape <coughs> and did not want to work out. Um, in fact, for most of my life, I would say, I don't really like working out. I'm a runner. Um, 
when I had my third baby, I realized I had to work out or I wouldn't be able to run. So I begrudgingly did as little as I possibly could to get by, to be able to run without getting injured, which is what I think <coughs> a lot of runners do. Oh my God, you guys. <coughs> and that was kind of really how I treated gym, my gym workouts up until, I would say this past year, 2024, 2023, we're not 2024 yet. I tolerated working out. Um, for a couple years in COVID, I, I didn't do anything. Like, I did nothing. And that's a bit embarrassing. So when I started these sessions live, um, and Betty, you might remember this, like, I was a beginner like everybody else. And I had to kind of swallow my pride and eat a piece of humble pie and realize, I just got to be honest with the world. This is where I'm at. But I'm doing something about it, and that's, and I had to forgive myself, right, that this is where I'm at, but I'm doing something about it, and I can't, I, I'm not going to change if I don't start, right, and that might be you right now, like, you might be sort of feeling that shame and that um, disappointment in yourself and embarrassment to, towards others, like, I remember thinking, I don't want to run into anyone I know after COVID, because they're <laughs> like, what happened to you? You used to be in such great shape, and look at you, what happened to you? And I was sort of like, I hope I can fix this before I see anybody. And lo and behold, no, because I'm in my 40s. It didn't just come off like it used to. Let's do two more per side. It took really a long time because it took me a process of going through um, identifying all the bad habits that I had accepted into my life and one by one changing them. And there was a lot of them, a lot more than I really realized or thought. Um, <clears throat> and so, again, I remember that first workout session thinking, listen, you just got to start. If you don't start, you're just going to stay here. So let the world see, let the world know. Um, you know, be vulnerable, admit your mistakes, and just go forward from there. And that's what we did. And here we are in this year. Um, one by one, those bad habits started to fall, but I was left with, I was gonna say two, but really one really damning habit of all of the habits that I was pretty reluctant to change or work on. I thought, I've, I've changed everything else. Please just let me keep this one bad habit. And that was my line. That was my, my, uh, my beverages. And I thought, why? Like, I, I, I do everything else right. Oh, why can I just have this one thing? And um, I was given an opportunity in December. I was accepted into a race. Um, that's another story, but it was a race that I used to really want to do when I was young and fit and strong and invincible. And I sort of gave up because I thought, that's never going to be me again. I'm now I'm middle-aged. I'm old. I'm just getting by. And when I got that invitation to do that race, I thought, I don't know how you do this, but I, there's things I can still work on, right? I know there's a few things that I can work on. And if I can just do what I can do, if I just focus on what I have control over, that's just going to have to be enough because there's, like, what else am I going to really do? That's four... Or, uh, we didn't do our RDLs, did we? <laughs> Three. And so, I quit alcohol this year. I quit alcohol um, December, January. But my very last drink was on January 8th, which was my birthday. I had two glasses of wine at the keg. And that was my last glass of wine. And <clears throat> every time I wanted to have a glass of wine or the back one, that changed, I thought, you, you need every every bit of help you can get to, to do this race, to accomplish this goal. So you, you can't do that. You have to wait till after the race is done, at the very least, right? That was kind of the very least I had to do. Um, but lo and behold, what happened was that one final change. And sometimes that's it, you guys. It's, it's that one final thing that you're holding on to the most. Um, maybe if I started even with that change, I would have gotten further sooner, 
we leave the hardest ones to the last, right? Kind of like, you know, you do the easy chores first. Two, three, four, five, six. It's that one thing often that needs to go. And um, I tell you, my whole world changed this year. And those of you who know me and who follow me know this because you've seen it. Um, and if you have, if you don't know me, haven't followed me, go to my YouTube channel, look at my old videos. Um, I looked very, very different last December, and it's funny. I don't recognize myself. Like I really think, who was that person? Um, I just looked so swollen and so puffy. Partly it was the weight gain. Partly it was um, likely the um, unhealthiness of my diet, like, right, like, unhealth kind of per, um, comes out of everywhere in us, like, our hair, our skin, our nails, and our puffiness, our bloatedness, right? Okay, we're going to my favorite slash least favorite, um, a couple of them, so I am going to grab my bench. I'm going to grab my bench. So if you're at home, you're going to need, if you're a beginner, you're not going to need anything. But if you are advanced or you've been doing this a while, we're going to do uh, split squats. <clears throat> and that means our leg, one leg is going to be up. And if you are new, you're not going to raise your leg. You're just going to do these on the, on the floor. So I gave up mine um, January 8th. And yesterday was... Day 331, random, I know. Okay, so we're starting. So if you're new, you're gonna do them like this. Okay, you're just gonna do like basically static lunges. No weights. Um, so mo moderate choice, you're gonna hold light weights. And then advanced, you're gonna lift your leg. Okay, and I'm gonna do one weight. I will say that um, Holding the weight on one side is going to work one part of your leg. Holding it on the other side is going to work the other part. So we're going to alternate. So I'm going to start with the same arm, same leg. And we're going to do uh, 10. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Again, you can do these if, um, three, if you're new with no weight. And you can play around with whether you want to do them on the floor, on the bench, or on a step, like if you have a set of stairs, or a chair in your dining room, or a cooler, I can do the cooler. So, that one thing that you're clinging to the most, and, and for some of us, it's alcohol. For some of us, maybe it's ice cap. I have a client who's like absolutely addicted to ice caps <laughs> from Tim Hortons. The thing that you least want to give up or change is probably the key to your biggest improvements, but I think we have to be, we have to be ready, right? So we have to be ready for real change. And sometimes we want real change, but we don't really want real change, right? We just want, um, we're just not ready to like go all in, so to speak. Uh, three, two, last one. I don't even know, I was trying to count, but, um, and then, the second one we're going to do in this set is, I'm going to move this forward so I have some space, is um, my other favorite. <laughs> I, I actually do like these now, but I used to hate these. Those of you who have been working out with me for a long time know. We're going to do 747, so you're going to, you're going to tip forward and come up. So this is what it's going to look like if you're a beginner. Okay? And, and you might even want to be close to a wall because some of the, uh, the, the biggest challenge in the beginning is like, balance part. I'm going to tight, pull in and tighten your core. Um, I'm going to use a weight. Same, same arm, same leg. And the next step we're going to switch. Okay, so 10 each side. This is also great for strengthening your feet. Three, four, woo, that's what happens. Five, six, so then keeping that chest out, 
and bring that back leg nice and high, squeezing that glute at the top. And last one, and pulling that core in. And the core is what's gonna keep you balanced. So if you're falling all over the place, probably don't have your core tight. Um, also, it's gonna work your inner outer thighs. Okay, other side for 10. Um, I also this year changed my diet, and that was huge. Now, I wanna practice that by saying, you know, in, in, as an overhaul or, or a, you know, what's the word? At a quick glance, let's call it. I ate pretty well. I ate pretty decent. Um, I definitely had accumulated some bad habits. Okay, so we had pizza night every Friday. Every Friday was pizza night. Um, pizza and sweet potato fries and sometimes some wings. <laughs> so it was kind of like the, you know, freebie night. And then the wine and the chips was, was honestly pretty much a nightly thing. Um, so those are some of like the bad habits and just, I just wasn't, again, I like to compare diet often to finances. So it's like, it's like just spending money without really paying attention to what you're spending it on. And, um, you know, that really can only be done if you're in a, in a certain situation, right? For most of us, we can't just go spending money on whatever whims we have with no consequences that are going to catch up with us eventually. And that's, to me, that's eating, right? Eating without tracking or being conscious of what you're choosing uh, to put in your body, which we all wanna do. We, we just wanna be able to eat whatever, in moderation, right, 80, 20. But the thing is, if you're not tracking and you're not, um, or at least doing a check-in periodically, I guarantee you, you're not doing 80, 20 the way you want to. You're doing 80, 20 like you're eating the bad things 80 and the good things 20, not the, the reverse, right? Guaranteed, because if, if you're not, because it all relies on your habits. Your habits are, are the things that you do unconsciously that you don't think about. So most of us, if we're not conscious about our behavior, we have some bad habits. And those bad habits compound, like I said in the beginning. And that is what's determining your results right now, not necessarily like, you know, what diet. It's, it's all the little things. So that's why I think tracking is really important. And so that for this year, for the first time in my whole life, I tracked and I measured. And I had never done that. I also, I also don't keep a good checkbook. So <laughs> and I'm not independently wealthy yet. So there you go. You want to take financial advice from me by any stretch. But nutritional advice, I can speak to you that um, you need to track. You need to measure until those things become unconscious behavior. Right, so until you establish the unconscious habits that you want, that are gonna get you to where you wanna go, you have to be conscious about them. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Uh, this year, this year my goal is financial fitness, so I'm applying all these concepts to my finances because I wanna be conscious about how I'm managing my money. In the past, I'm just kinda like, oh, you know, there's always money sitting there, right? No matter how broke you are, there's always money sitting there. What do you do with it? <laughs> do you go buy a bottle of wine, right? If, if you want to know, you know, the state of financial access, <laughs> um, nobody ever has trouble getting the things that they really want to get, right? So nobody quits drinking because they can't afford it. At least not that I'm aware of. Three, two, last one. And so, you got to be conscious about your habits. And for this, this was the first year ever, because trust me, I was the one that said, I don't want to measure, I don't want to track. That is not the kind of life I want to lead. And I sold that story to myself, like nobody's business. Um, and I believed in myself. Because we are really good at selling ourselves. And we're so good at selling ourselves, that we become good at selling everyone around us. And so I sold a lot of crap to myself and in turn sold it to people around me, people around me that know me, like my mom, my best friend. Um, my best friend and I run every five days a week we run together. Oh, don't do what I'm doing here. Um, I think that's five. And I hid so much from her regarding my wine consumption and my alcohol like addiction and by addiction I mean I needed to have it. I joked about it 
Like I made fun of myself in order to make it seem okay and make it seem like, no, I don't have a problem. That wasn't just for her benefit, that was for my own benefit, right? Like to, you know, make light of it. Um, looking back, I'm like, man, you know, we are good. Every, you know how everybody says, I'm not a salesperson. You know, I don't, I don't sell, I'm not a salesperson. You sell yourself on all kinds of crap every day. I, we are really good at it. And we sell our loved ones, we sell our partners, we sell our kids. Like, honestly, we are all really good salespeople when we really want to sell something. And so um, I sold myself these stories, but at the beginning too, one of the best things I did was I humbled myself and I became new. I decided to become a student of my own industry all over again, right? I pretended I didn't know the things that I knew. I sort of erased them all from my mind. I handed myself over to um, somebody I trusted to help me. And I followed a program she gave me. And I followed it to a T despite some of the things going against some of my stories um, for myself. And you guys, I want to I wanna throw that out to you for a second. Like if you're sitting here watching or listening to me and you're like, I need that. I, I want to be that person for you. Like, um, and I want to invite you to reach out to me anytime. Like if, because I, I kind of want to return the favor, but the first thing I have to say to anybody that I work with is, you've got to let me help you. You've got to, you got to put your trust in me. And you know, you don't have to trust me if you don't, like it's not about that. But um, if you, if you do like decide to work with me, I'm like, you got to, you got to put your trust in me so I can help you. Because if you try to, half do what I say, half do what someone else says, half do what someone else says, and which is what I was doing, because I wanted, because I'm a professional, like I'm a, a health and wellness professional, I can do this myself, I can do all the research and I'll take all these pieces, and it was not working, and so I became new again, I became a student, I chose the person that I was going to work with, and I did diligently what she said, and the results came so fast, I had abs, I still kind of have them. Um, for the first time, and I'm not talking, oh, I'm one of those people that naturally has abs. No, I do not naturally have. I've never had abs in my life, not even since I was like, this is our last set, you guys. Can you believe it? This session went so fast for me. Um, so 10 each side, 10. Um, the results came so fast, and the reason was um, because I went all in, but mostly I went all, all in mentally. And I let somebody help me, and I became new again, and I stopped trying to do everything myself, and I stopped trying to know everything, because I'm in the industry. Three, two, make sure your knee is tracking over your big toe in this one, and also make sure that you can see your big toe. Like make sure your, your knee isn't coming forward. You should be able to see your big toe, and your knee should be going straight, not to in, leaning in or, or out. Um, And of course, when the results come fast, what happens? Your motivation goes like this. Like I was all in, like the pounds came, well, to be honest, the pounds didn't come off initially, but I could feel, I feel, could feel myself feeling better and I could feel smaller and the scale dropped and the, it just kept dropping, dropping, dropping. My energy kept going up, up, up. My sleep got better. My inflammation went away and I could work out and run without pain which was honestly more, meant more to me than anything else um, because it's hard to feel motivated to exercise when you feel like garbage, right? Like it's not fun to do anything that feels like crap. Now it might feel like crap in the beginning, but you can get to a place where it feels good and you actually enjoy it. Um, you're gonna wanna keep doing it, right? And so um, I didn't stop. I, I didn't stop, I kept going, and I lost 21 pounds. My running was, you know, on point this year. In fact, I feel more fired up about my running than I have in probably since my 30s. <laughs> um, I'm so excited to train now because it's not, it really sucks doing things but not really feeling good and not getting the results. And so, um, if, I, if anything I'm saying is like, you know, you're relating to, um, 
give me a follow, but, uh, but I want you to connect with me on Instagram or Facebook because TikTok is really hard to talk to people on. And I want to help you because this year I'm all about turning around and giving back what I got. So um, I really want to see more women understand that you don't have to accept feeling like garbage. Like you can actually be fitter now than maybe you've been in your whole life. Like I, I didn't think so <laughs> a year ago. I thought I just had to work with what I had left. That's four and that's five. Woo! My balance is so off today. Five, four. This is a good uh, leg session today. Two, my butt is gonna feel this tomorrow. I wanna invite you two to join me tomorrow. I'll be back same time. Um, on Facebook and in TikTok, join me either for a chat, <laughs> um, if you're not ready yet, or join me to move with me. Um, one of the reasons why in the beginning I called these move sessions is because when I was a beginner and I was starting, the words work out or exercise were so intimidating to me. Like, this, the second I said I gotta go work out, I had resistance. So I thought, you know what, I can move my body. Moving our body is natural. Um, I'm gonna call them move sessions because that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to move our body in the beginning. And I wanna invite you to join me uh, three times a week. Either you join me doing the move sessions or you, or you watch in the beginning, maybe you do the warm up with me. Um, and when you're ready, like I have a whole channel on YouTube where I can help you um, and you can do all the replays if this timing doesn't work. So I thank you again for joining me today and um, I'm going to sign off on Facebook right now. See you guys tomorrow ladies.